Good evening, brothers and sisters. Welcome to tonight's Bible reading and study. As always, we're going to go with the Lord in prayer. Uh, we want to remember all of those that are on our hearts and on our minds, um, constantly lifting up each and one, each and every one of us, our ministries, those who are um, suffering from uh, health issues and uh, lifting up our government and as these things are going on that they make wise, wise choices. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today to first of all thank you for everything that you've done in and through our lives. Thank you for giving us another day and waking us up, dear God, so that we can go out and be representations unto you looking to where you are working at so that we can join in as your workmanship, looking for the opportunities that you put forth to each and every one of us daily so that we may join in and assist with the growth of your kingdom, dear God, as you see fit. We lift up you, dear God, our brother Dano, that you continue to heal his body so that he can serve you in the utmost way. We lift up to you, brother Frank, dear God, that you continue to heal his body so that again he can continue in the ministry in which that you called him. To the, to the utmost fullest. We lift up to you, Brother Frank's family and Brother Dano's family and each and every family of our brothers and sisters that's on here tonight, dear God, and that are out there in the world ministering, looking for the opportunities in which, which you are working so that we, they can join in. Again, expanding the kingdom of God. We lift up to you, dear God, everyone that's got chronic diseases going on. That as they receive these treatments, dear God, that they're going through, that you provide them with the peace to know that it's all going to work out in the end. And that you, Heavenly Father, have your hand upon each and every one of them to bring glory unto yourself and unto the kingdom. We lift up to you those who are prepared for surgery, dear God, Brother, uh, Brother Larry, Sister T, Brother Terry, and all of those out there that are uh, preparing for surgeries, dear God, that we know that your hand is going to be upon the surgeons as they go in and repair whatever it is, is needed to be repaired so that our brothers and sisters can go out and again be used by you to their utmost fullest again bringing glory up unto yourself and to the kingdom we lift up you dear God everyone that's lost loved ones that you continue to provide them peace for those who have been in accidents or have already gone through surgeries that you are um, got your healing hands upon them and that they are healing so that soon they may too go out and work amongst you being the light unto the world dear God each and every one showing the uh, compassion and the love of Jesus Christ and you, our Father. We lift up to you, those who are suffering from addiction, dear God, that you take those addictions and you take them from them, showing them that peace and the true path can come through our one Savior, Jesus Christ. And we lift up to you, dear God, our uh, brothers in uniform, that you continue to heal their bodies, the ones that, have, that are uh, healing, and those that have lost their lives and gave the ultimate sacrifice 
And we know that they are up with you, dear God, but you give their families peace to know that they will not have lost their lives in vain. And we lift up to you, dear God, this ministry, that it continues to be a light into the world and a light into the path. And as your vessel approaches your throne and altar, and as we study and deliver your word, dear God, that the Holy Spirit fills within this, uh, this vessel and that nothing but your true word comes forth. And that everything is done and said brings glory unto you. For we know where two or three are gathered in one accord, you are in their presence. And we know that there are many that are together, together, gathered together tonight, dear God, in your presence. Even though we're far away from each other, through this virtual form, we are <coughs> gathered together in one accord. Digging deep within your word. And as we finish up this first letter uh, that Paul delivered to the Corinthians, dear God, and we prepare to go into the second letter that, God, that Paul delivered to the Corinthians, that you keep our hearts open, binding every word within our hearts and in our soul, our minds, and our conscience, so that we may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of the Father. For all of these things we bring up to you and bring glory unto you, knowing that you are going to provide and protect for each and every one of us. You are going to put godly leaders to guide our country, dear God, dear, God, dear Father. For you say the people who are called by your name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways. You will heal their lands and forgive their sins, which we know that you are all forgiving and all forgetting. So, dear Father, we lift up to you everything that is done tonight through the Jesus Christ by way of the Holy Spirit, bringing glory unto the Father. Amen and amen. <coughs> Again, we are in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 1. This is the... Um, Last chapter of Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Now about the collection for the saints. Do the same as I instructed the Galatian churches. For the first day of the week, each of you is to set, a, set, is to set something aside and save in keeping with how he is prospering so that no collection will need to be made when I come. When I arrive, I will send you letters. Those you recommend to carry your gifts to Jerusalem, if it is suitable for me to go as well, they will travel with me. Paul's travel plans. I will come to you after I pass through Macedonia, and I will be traveling through Macedonia, and perhaps I will remain with you or even spend the winter so that you may send me on my way whenever I go, wherever I go. I don't want to see you now just in passing, since I hope to spend some time with you, if the Lord allows. But I will stay in Ephesus until Pentecost, because a wide door for effective ministry has opened for me. Yet many oppose me. If Timothy comes, see <clears throat> see that he has nothing to fear while with you because he is doing the Lord's work just as I am so let no one look down on him send him on his way in peace so that he can come to me because I am expecting him with the brothers now about our brother Apollos I strongly urge him to come to you with the brothers but he was not at all willing to come now. However, he will come when he has an opportunity. Final exhortation. Be alert. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. Do everything in love, brothers and sisters. I know the household of Stephanus 
They are the first fruits of Achaia and have devoted themselves to serving the saints. I urge you also to submit to such people and to everyone who works and labors with them. I am delighted to have Stephanus, Portanus, and Archaeus, Archaeus, Archaeus present, because these men have made up for your absence, for they have refreshed my spirit and yours. Therefore, recognizing such people. Conclusion. The churches of Asia send your greetings. Send you greetings. Aquila and Priscilla send you greetings warmly in the Lord, along with the church that meets in their home. All the brothers and sisters send you greetings. Greet one another with a holy kiss. This greeting is in my own hand. Paul, if anyone does not love the Lord, a curse be on him. Our Lord come, the grace of the Lord Jesus be with you. My love be with all of you in Jesus Christ. <coughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything that you have pre presented to us through this letter from Paul in your Holy Scriptures. We thank you for the direction in which you have taken us. And dear Lord, we understand that we must stay strong with, within you, showing the love that comes through us by way of the Holy Spirit given to us by Jesus Christ. Speaking always in the name of Jesus Christ, using the scriptures to lift up those and to stay strong in the Lord. Again, we bring grace, honor, and glory unto you, dear God, in return for the grace and the honor that you have bestowed upon each and every one of us so that we may be the light unto our paths and the light unto the world path proving what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of you, Father. For all of these things we give exhortation to in the name of Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, to the Father, binding each and every word in our hearts, our soul, and our minds. Amen and amen. <coughs> Proverbs chapter 3. Verses 1 through 12, trust in the Lord. My son, don't forget my teachings, but let your heart keep my commands. For they will bring you many days of full life and well-being. Never let loyalty and faithfulness leave you. Tie them around your neck. Write them on a tablet of your heart. <coughs> then you will find favor and high regard with people, God and people. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways know him and he will make your path straight. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. This will be healing for your body and strengthening for your bones. Honor the Lord with your passions and with the first produce of your entire harvest. Then your barns will be completely filled, and your vats will overflow with new wine. Do not despise the Lord's instruction, my son, and do not loathe his discipline. For the Lord's discipline is the one he loves, just as a father disciplines the son in whom he delights. Believers are called to fully trust in the Lord. Proverbs 3, 5-8 Underlining the phrase, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways know him and he will make your path straight. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. 
This will be healing for your body and strengthening for your bones. <clears throat> These verses call us to three actions. First, they call they we are called to trust the Lord with complete and total confidence. Second, we are not to rely on our own understanding apart from having our minds shaped and conformed by godly wisdom. Third, as we trust God and reject ungodly thinking, we are to know or acknowledge God in His truth. No area of our thinking, feeling, and behavior is off limits to God. As we trust God, Avoid godless thinking and acknowledge Him in every area of life. He will make our path straight. God's wisdom strengthens out the path so that we can go on in the right direction. In verse 7, Solomon appealed to his son to avoid trusting in himself. Also in verse 5, instead of being wise in his own eyes, he was to fear the Lord, which is the beginning of true knowledge. Proverbs 1, 7. Solomon also challenged his son to turn away from evil. Repentance, turning away from sin, is not a one-time event, but the continual practice of a sincere believer. The consequences of obeying these commands are remarkable. In verse 8, Solomon identified the results of obeying these commands, health and strengthening of both body and soul. In summary, we are to remember the Lord in all that we do. Proverbs 3, 1 through 4. The call remains for us to fully trust in the Lord. Verses 5 through 8. Rejoicing in the good consequences of wise and godly living. Contrast, contrast those who trust in God with those who trust in themselves. How should this contrast encourage you to live a God-honoring life? Live a God-honoring life life. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, I know within myself how when I try to do things on my own, I ultimately mess them up. No matter how much I think that I've got everything in control, Whenever I try to do things on my own away from God, they seem to go awry. Nothing just kind of falls into place. But God has showed me whenever I trust in Him fully of what He can do and how He can put things into perfect perspective. Fitting everything together like a puzzle piece. Again, brothers and sisters, I've already revealed this to you one time, but I'm going to reveal it again. At the end of 2019, I was in despair. I tried so hard to make things work. I knew what God's call was for me. And I tried so hard to put things together in a God-honoring way. But they fell through. I even, in my prayer time, cried out to God. I said, God, is this not what you wanted me to do? I felt it on my heart. I thought this was the direction that you were wanting me to go. But he used it 
to bring glory unto himself. For through that rejection, I was ministered to on July, January 1. By a brother in South Carolina at an event that I went to. For I would not have went to that event if probably if the other had fulfilled. And God already knew what was coming to pass in our society. He already knew of this time of refuge. And he knew he would need people who would stand up for the Lord God in a different and unique way. Yes, there was many churches doing virtual services, but the coming together that we have seen through this virtual medium in the capacity that it has been has not been like before, and God knew this. He knew that this, he would need godly men to stand up and say, I will be that vessel. And God, I started this as just a way, not with the anticipation of it growing to the expanse that it has, but with just to show help with my Sunday school class so that we could come together nightly and study the Sunday school lesson. I had no idea God was going to spread it as far as he did and to the point that he has started a new and unique virtual body bait started not from a brick and mortar, but initiated through a virtual platform base of nothing else. With the purpose of getting God's word out daily, the inherent truth of God not with me in it, not with no one else in it, but God's inherent truth as delivered in his word. And then God and that word <coughs> edifying throughout the entire world different multi and single bodies of Christ carrying it forward and edifying others again this has been founded on a true mission of God not me God in Christ did everything of this I could not have planned this And each and every day I trust that God will give me the strength and the ability to deliver this word day in and day out with the one underlining goal to prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God bringing glory unto the Father. When you fully trust in the Lord, great things will happen. God has not only blessed this ministry, but he has blessed this family. I'm not going to say that we are riding along on gravy trains financially, but God has met every need that we've had. Not through anything that I have done or my wife has done or my children have done, but through everything God has done by just being obedient. As Solomon said, telling his son or his sons, 
or the young man of his kingdom, which could apply to all, is to fully trust in the Lord, no matter how what comes, no matter what affliction that you are in. If you trust in the Lord and you honor him day in and day out, he will bless you. For the purpose of none other than to show his love and to bring glory unto the Father. In the hopes and prayers of each and one, every one of his children who are called by his name. Fervently as they pray for God to heal this land. And I truly believe. Honestly, brothers and sisters, I truly believe that there will be a great awakening, that God will show himself in all of this. I know we don't see it now. There's so much going on. There's so much feelings inside of us. As I told a sister that I was talking to the, uh, yesterday, is I am fully prepared that this gets out of hand. To go on a great exodus. I am fully prepared like the Jews, the Christian believers in Acts in Jerusalem. When Paul, Saul, before he became Paul, when Saul was murdering Christians, I am, for, I am fully prepared to leave everything, taking my wife and my family and going and becoming a recluse in the mountains, getting away from everything. In my words, I told her, I said, I'm ready to be an Eric Rudolph without murdering, just disappearing, falling off the face of the earth. But I have faith in the Lord. Yeah, my emotions tell me that this is getting really, really bad. But I've got to have faith in God and the trust in the Lord that He is going to create a great awakening. And that all of this is going to work out in the end. I have learned that when I put my own self into it, it don't work out. But yet, whenever I trust in the Lord, with all my body and all my soul, God will strengthen me. And He will bless myself and my family. For as for me and my family, we will trust in the Lord. That's what Solomon is saying to his son, sons or young men of the kingdom. That that kingdom would be strong, that household would be strong as long as they remained in the Lord. We can see if we search through the text of God's scripture, we can see <clears throat> Solomon's was the last of the United Kingdoms. After Solomon, the kingdom split and there was good kings and there were bad kings. Some remained in the Lord, and the Israelites would be blessed. Some would not, and the Israelites would be overtaken taken, and put into captivity. That's what First, Second Chronicles 7.14, he is telling, God is telling his people, 
He's reminding them of the persecutions that they've been under. And if they would only, if they would only, instead of putting their selves above God, would humble themselves and trust in the Lord, they would be a blessed and mighty kingdom. This ministry, God, is making a blessed and mighty kingdom. And um, a ministry, blessed and mighty ministry, excuse me, a blessed and mighty ministry unto God, bringing glory unto Him. As long as we trust in Him and we are obedient unto Him to get into our Word every night, understanding that we are subject to the Father. And apart from him, we can do nothing. There are many things that are needed, and I know God will supply it so that we can expand this ministry into a larger virtual presence instead of through this one social media platform. There are things we need to expand it beyond that into many social media platforms. And I know, I see how God has expanded it through this one. He will meet the needs, and I trust in Him, that He will meet the needs to expand it into a multiple so, uh, social media platform, virtual platform. So that it can be spread from continent to continent, from area to area. So that everyone, as Paul talked about in Romans, as with Paul's heart, so that everyone would hear. But even without that, even if it's not God's will, for us to expand beyond this social platform. God's word will still get out. But I pray that God uses and continues to use myself and each one of y'all, you brothers and sisters, to spread the word of God, to spread the good news. Again, Trusting in the Lord with all your heart that He will give you what you need. He is the provider. He is the great shepherd. He is the provider. He is the protector. <coughs> he is our Heavenly Father. And we must do it with love, not condemnation. We must show each and everybody love, the love of Christ prepared to sacrifice ourselves and the things that we want for the things that God wants. So again, brothers and sisters, I, I challenge you for you yourself to contrast those who trust in God with those who trust in themselves. And think deeply on how should this contrast encourage you to live a God-honoring life. Think about within yourselves also how whenever you trusted in yourself versus how things are going when you trust in the Lord. Recognizing of how the blessings come from those who trust in the Lord. For Christ said, he told the Israelites before they entered into the land of Canaan, he said, and I'll leave you with this, he said, for those who will remain 
in my commands, I will bless. But those who turn their back on my commands, I will curse. And I name this as a witness, all of heaven and all of earth. So therefore, brothers and sisters, he is saying that when we trust and turn our eyes upon the Lord and keep our eyes upon the Lord and trust in him, then he will bless us. But whenever we turn our eyes away from the Lord, when we separate ourselves from the Lord and we turn to our own understanding, that is when the word of God, the wisdom of God leaves us and we no longer receive the blessings that come from God. Heavenly Father, thank you for letting us come together today. Thank you for letting us enter into your word. Thank you for giving your vessel <coughs> the information that comes out. Knowing that you are the one who pulls out every one of these scriptures. Revealing them through this vessel by way of the Holy Spirit. For we have met, read many, many many of your scriptures over the last four months daily. But yet you always know which ones at the appropriate time to pull to bring justification and wisdom through your word. It is not through my own abilities, dear God, but it is through yours. For sometimes I think to myself, even when I read your scriptures, that when I sit down and reflect, there's some of them I have to look at again because I cannot remember what was read word for word. But I know that you are hiding them within my heart because you bring them all out at the appropriate time. For you are doing this, not myself, dear God, for I trust fully in you that you will use myself and this ministry and my family and my brothers and sisters to spread out your word, your love. And I know that trusting in you instead of relying on my own understanding is the way in which you further your kingdom. Again, not through my own understanding, but through yours, Heavenly Father. Again, we lift up every one of our brothers and sisters unto you, everyone out there, dear God, whether of their own understanding or brothers and sisters in the Word. <coughs> that your love reign true and that you create the great awakening that you are prepared you are preparing for this nation and the world again we love you bring glory unto you God bring honor with the holy kiss through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, by way of the Holy Spirit, to the Father, amen and amen. Again, we love y'all. Uh, tomorrow night, we will be a little bit late. We have our uh, meeting with our brothers and sisters um, tomorrow evening, and we plan on attending. Pray that God keeps us safe, uh, that God's uh, will is done in our meeting, and that... Um, Everything that is done and said bring glory unto God. And uh, we come back with a great and awesome report and a blessed report. And uh, it'll probably be like 10, 10.30 tomorrow night. If you can't join us live, we will, um, sure enough, um, you'll be able to uh, watch it uh, Saturday morning. But watch again, um, we love y'all. Um, Again, keep us in our prayers, the ministry in your prayers, and our brothers and sisters in your prayers. God bless. Good night. Now let me show Onyx.
Say hey, Onyx. Onyx. Look up. There we go. She got to take us out, G. Yeah.